Hello Chill Computer Guy, today we're in Reason Propeller Head Reason 10, we're in Reason 10, don't ask me how I got in Reason 10, but it's not on demo mode. Anyway, I found this, this certain just workflow with VSTs and Propeller Head Reason, just, just the flow, there's, there's workflow issues I must say, but the, 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 uh, the environment, the fluidity of the environment and the, the conducive spirit the propeller head reason has when you combine that with with VSTs it's there's a there's a there's a certain uh, magic that happens there and I'm really really finding propeller head reason to really be a great uh, program to compose music in uh, one of the issues that we're going to talk about this time is uh, DSP um, while running VSTs that does pump up your DSP there's there's DSP issues I've been having them um, but I found a few little helpful hints. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and play through this song and then we'll talk about it. Ah, oh, there it is. The message that we're all so familiar with. Uh, computer too slow to play song. Now, here's the thing. If you notice my DSP, it is pretty high there. It's spiking up pretty good. That's because I have a few VSTs in my project. I just happen to have a couple VSTs which are pretty high in DSP. Um, now, there's a couple of ways around this. You can bounce your stuff down to audio, which is great if you think of Reason as an environment for tracking. Um, but there's a few other little things. Now, this whole thing with the track seizing and you getting this pop-up, that gets annoying. If you want to get rid of that, what you can do is you can go into Preferences. And then on the very first page of Preferences, right at the bottom, you can see the CP usage limit. Now, by default, this is set to 80%. Uh, I have mine set to 90, but actually what I prefer is having this set to none. Okay. If you have this set to none, you're going to get a different behavior. Instead of a pop-up window, you're just going to get that poppy, scratchy thing that most DAWs do. Let's go ahead and listen to that real quick here. So you can see instead of getting that annoying pop-up window you just get the scratchiness um, now another quick tip so what you can see here is I set up a master section I just basically pipe this down this is piped down from the master section um, and I piped it down to the bottom here so we can see it right next to the DSP meter um, and this is basically my master chain minus the reverb the reverb I just threw that in here because it's uh, this is the Abbey Road reverb this thing is super high in DSP and so it's a really good uh, kind of a testing thing to see kind of where your DSP is. Now in propeller head reason, there's no way to actually deactivate or freeze tracks, but you can, however, cut down on DSP by simply disabling the VSTs. Now, <clears throat> this bypass button is not going to do anything, okay? What this bypass button is basically doing is it's basically bypassing the signal coming out of the wires in the send and return. The effects, however, are still active. They're just not part of the signal chain. So they are taking up DSP. So go ahead and watch. We're going to play this. Watch the DSP meter and then watch me when I hit this. Uh... So you can see by hitting bypass it did not affect the DSP whatsoever. The only way to actually disable these effects are to either use the bypass button right here or my favorite way to actually do it is just to hit this green power button. And that is something that is very unique to the uh, VST shell is this power button. This is super important because by turning this off you're disabling that effect. 
In other words, it's not going to use up any more DSP. So you can see my DSP. What I'm going to do is play this song, and I'm going to click the green button on all three of these. You'll see the DSP drop way, way down. Watch the DSP meter. So like I say, this bypass button has nothing to do with the actual, all this is doing is bypassing it from the signal chain. It's not deactivating the effects. Now you can also bypass it down here. Same thing, I'm going to play it and then I'm going to actually bypass it using this switch here. So you can see by clicking this uh, bypass switch that also cut way, way down on the DSP. But, you know, I really do like this power button. In my opinion, this is the best way to deactivate the effects. Um, but yeah, the other day I noticed my DSP getting high because I was using quite a bit of VSTs. And what I did is I went to all the mixed channels and I clicked on this bypass button and just, you know, bypassed all these and then in inside my inserts I had some VST so I just click bypass bypass and I was still getting DSP spikes I'm like what the heck what's the deal and so the only way to actually deactivate the VSTs is to either use this bypass switch in the actual rack or click this green on and off button that's the way I prefer to do it um, and so that's quickly how to deactivate your VSTs and propeller head reason that way they're not uh, they're not soaking up your your DSP so much now third way to control your DSP is under preferences if you click on the audio tab you'll get uh, the audio card driver this is where you set right now we're going through the Logitech which is I'm, I'm talking through right now and uh, it has a little bit different buffer um, but what you can do is you can adjust these settings and uh, the sample rate the higher this is, the more taxing it will be on your DSP. Now, um, this is with the Logitech. If you go into uh, the Complete Audio 6 um, in this example, you'll have a Control Panel button here. And if you click on that, it will actually open up the Control Panel here in the Complete Audio 6. And then again, the lower the number is here, the less taxing it's going to be on your DSP. And then also we can control the buffer. Now the lower this number is, the more taxing it will be on your DSP. So you want a high number here. So if you set this to 1024 and 441, that's going to be the most uh, efficient as far as DSP. You might have some latency issues there as well. Now you also have a USB buffer on this particular sound card which can uh, also help. Um, so if you're having issues with the DSP, that might be something to look into is setting this. I usually set it at 512.44.1. Um, you know, unless I'm, you know, bounce some stems down and I'm, I'm working on like vocals, then I might set it a little bit higher, but I've usually bounced down my material by then. So I have a little bit more leeway on DSP. Yeah, there's the, you know, there's the Abbey Road reverb. This is this is pretty much the highest DSP uh, VST I can find right here is the Savvy Road Reverb. This thing really, really sucks the juice. Um, so I recommend putting it on your uh, send and returns and basically leaving it off until you're doing your, you know, your final mix downs. Um, you know, I might use an, uh, another reverb just to kind of get a feel for it. And then, you know, I'll put this on at the very end for the finishing touch, you know, that type of thing. So that's it. That's a couple of, uh, of good tips to, uh, to help uh, manage your DSP issues with a lot of VSTs. The first one is under your options, move this down to none. And that way, instead of getting that pop-up window, you'll just get the, uh, the cracks and pops. If you don't want to listen to those or you're worried about your speakers or something, then just put this on, you know, 95%. Um, and then that way, you know, the 80% default is a little... Uh, 
a little much so if you don't want to hear the pop set this to 95 but if you want to just keep playing your music and have it play through some of those rough spots just click down to none and it will just kind of uh it'll still go through it won't stop playing you know you'll get little pops and stuff but it'll play through those high dsp points uh, instead of just seizing up your track so that's tip number one tip number two is the fact that if you have uh, vsts remember the only way to actually save those resources to deactivate them and get some of your resources back is to actually uh, turn them off and on here the bypass switch does not work okay that bypass switch does not work that's basically just bypassing the signal path but it's keeping the VSTs running which is taxi the only way to actually uh, cut the DSP usage from your VSTs is to actually click this uh, on and off button right here or you can use this bypass switch on the left I prefer the on and off button it's much much easier to see uh, it's one click instead of a click in the middle of a click and the third one is to go to your audio tab under preferences and change some of your audio card driver settings uh, remember the sample rate the smaller this number is the more efficient it is on DSP and the buffer size the larger this number is the more efficient it is going to be on DSP so that's the third thing is change some of these options find something that is a good balance between uh, quality and low DSP usage the only thing you really have to take in take into account here is latency um, and that only really matters if you're doing a vocal type of material and whatnot and so yeah check it out um, VSTs and propeller head reason is a very very uh, it's a really really cool work environment I'm really really liking the reason environment with VSTs but managing the DSP gets a little bit complicated when you put a bunch of DSPs in so that that little power button is a is a handy handy thing to know as well as switching your computer limit to none that way it won't actually seize your track it'll just play through the rough spots anyway chill computer guy if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel give a thumbs up give a comment let me know what you want to see and uh we'll see you guys again oh there it is there it is oh wow Okay.